What's going on everybody? My name is Adam James. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a plastics engineer. I created about two videos about a year ago and had a couple conflicts, uh, which was the reason behind not being able to upload as many videos as I'd like to. I got all of that resolved recently, so I figured I'd kick it off by uh, providing you guys with some fusion tutorials and hopefully building a community that we can all kind of benefit from uh, within plastics product design, Fusion 360 workflows, uh, and engineering uh, using some of these products as a whole. So in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of organizational techniques that I typically like to use in Fusion 360. Uh, I'll go over file creation, project folders, how they're automatically already uploaded to your Fusion 360 account. And we'll go over component naming, uh, sub assemblies, uh, and it's really just gonna be an organizational video, which is something that I've benefited from over the past couple of years using Fusion, moving over from programs like SolidWorks or Katia, and how you can stay organized using some of these newer um, CAD softwares that maybe you're not necessarily as experienced with. We'll also be going over uh, function naming and the importance of naming those functions for dimensions. Uh, it really makes your uh, dimension creation a little more seamless and easier to use as we uh, get into more complex dimensions. And so from there, I will jump into Fusion 360 and I'll do a little voiceover just like my other two videos. And uh, feel free to leave some comments below, like, subscribe, and yeah, enjoy. So now we're in the Fusion 360 workspace. And before I go much further, I did want to mention that I am using my Mac microphone for this video. Um, hopefully as we go further, I can grab a new microphone and set this up. But this is what I have readily available. Uh, let me know if you hear some background noise and um, we can certainly fix that throughout the course of the next videos in these series. So. Let's jump on into it. Uh, as you can see, I have this YouTube project folder. This is where I'll be doing all of my YouTube projects, right? Uh, and all I did was create new project and then right clicked and did rename. Uh, this is a great way to organize all of your projects. Uh, see this bottle, uh, phone zone, skate trucks, right? So when you're starting a new project, you always want to do new project, create new project, and then right click on it and rename it. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it later down the road and some things can just kind of get out of hand and uh, it's a great way to just stay organized. So we'll double click on the YouTube project folder and as you could probably already guess, I've got this uh, plastic bottle assembly. So we're going to be working with a plastic bottle cap and the bottle. And in here we have plastic bottle assembly. Um, just for um, an example, you know, maybe later down the road we'll do a bike example or something. You just do new folder, bike assembly, right? And then, and then I would do all of my projects and files in there. So I have my plastic bottle assembly. In here, I did a new design and then saved it as plastic bottle assembly and it populated over here in the data panel. So as you can see over here, we've got two different components in this overall assembly. And to create those, just to show you how, you right click on the assembly and do new component. There it pops up a new component. You can click it twice slowly and then say, uh, geez, I don't know what else goes on a bottle. We'll just do wrapper as an example. Um, and we'll delete that because we do not need it. So we'll work on the cap first. Uh, what we want to do is activate the component, left click on it, and now you can see it turned this gray color, so it's now active. Depending on your display settings, it may be a different display. You can go to Object Visibility, um, Effects, Mesh Display, or Visual Style, um, and change uh, the effects there. So 
I do have two, three things created. I've got this uh, sketch one, I've got this extrude here, and I've got a shell. But what I wanted to mention is as we go and modify here, I have this parameter. And this change parameters in this user parameter, you can do, just click on this little plus button, and you can enter a name. So that's what I did. I created this user parameter called cap D and made it 45 millimeters. And just to show you, I'll go into this first sketch here. Another way you can access that is going into sketches under here. We can show it. Right click, edit sketch. And you can see it's got this little function 45. So what that means is I had already previously defined this function as 45 millimeters um, as the diameter. So if I double click on this, it says cap D, it doesn't say 45. So I think the benefit of this, in my opinion, is that when you finish the sketch and say you go, okay, well, maybe later down the line, that's too big or too small, instead of having to scroll your timeline all the way back and find that, and obviously this is pretty easy because we've only got three different things on our timeline, but it's much easier to just go click, change parameters, and you know that this is cap diameter, and you can change it right here, and you can go 30. Click OK, and you can see it updated automatically and it kept that shell thickness as well because the shell if we open this is three millimeters so it's going to stay three millimeters in thickness from that outside diameter so that's just a trick I like to use uh, really simplistic but it does help you stay organized and it does allow you to not have to go back and find the sketch later down the line Another thing you can do is name these sketches as you go. So you could say cap diameter. So if you maybe forget to do the change parameters or put a parameter in for that dimension, you can go look through all of your sketches and then go, okay, I'm going to edit the cap diameter sketch, which I know is this sketch because I named it cap diameter early on. This is a really good workflow to stay organized throughout the whole design process in Fusion 360. So I'll do a little bit of uh, modeling here. We're just going to give this a little thread for cap. Um, I always like to have it modeled. I think it looks better, of course. And we will give this a fillet. Quick little fillet here. Okay, three millimeters. Looks pretty good. Great, so there's our cap. Um, then we're going to create our bottle. So again, this is our entire plastic bottle assembly, right? We've got our cap. Now we need have another component. And why I really like to do this is because you can reference this cap geometry to create your other bottle instead of jumping back in between different parts for dimensions and whatnot. So if we activate this, we go, okay, we're just going to use this plane. Makes it really, really easy to stay in line with all those previous dimensions. So we'll create a sketch on that bottom plane. C for circle. I'm just going to make it large enough. Again, this isn't necessarily a modeling tutorial. It's just to get you guys familiar with how to stay organized. Again, I didn't even label that under user parameters, but what I can do really quick is go into sketches. Oh, let's do, let's extrude this really quick. Extrude that. And this is the bottle diameter, right? Perfect. You can also rename your features. So you can say bottle height, which 
is really convenient because if you go over this, you know that this extrusion is the bottle height. So when you're going through your entire timeline, I know there's only two items here, but for some complex geometrical parts, it really helps to then go, okay, this is the bottle diameter sketch. And then from there, this extrusion created the height of that bottle. You know, you could have also done a revolve and then renamed that feature as well. I know this is a little tedious, but believe me, it helps in the long run. It really does. So we've got our cap. Activate that. We've got our bottle. Activate that. Uh, we'll give this a little radius as well. Make sure this is activated. Give this a tiny little... Radius. And then we can activate the entire assembly. There we go, we've got our cap and bottle. I know this looks absolutely awful. In fact, if we do section analysis, say on this front plane here, yuck, <laughs> this doesn't even go through it. This is not even hollow, but that's not the purpose of this video. So. This is a really good way, and then what we do, we do saved. I like to do user saved one, or instead of user, you could do Adam saved, and you could even do the date. Today is the third, one, three. And then as you go through your revisions, you can see history. Oh, get out of here, Siri. Adam saved 1-3. So you know the date it was saved. Instead of user saved 1, user saved 2, you can go back and know when you saved it um, by the date, which is kind of cool in my opinion. So it's all saved. We've got cap, bottle, and it's only take, taking one uh, full assembly, right? So we go back here, we've got plastic bottle assembly. What we can do so you can actually export these as a Fusion file by itself. And if you wanted to export these as individual files, you could just do export, bring it back into here, and you could even have maybe a new, uh, new folder called bottle assembly individual components. And maybe we go full assembly. So let's just do this for the sake of showing how it's done. We will do export. This is the cap. And we're going to save it to the computer. I'm going to do documents and create a new folder here called YouTube projects. Another new folder called plastic bottle assembly. And go individual components. Here we can also do another one, full assembly. And I misspelled that and said fully assembly. Okay, individual components. So if we open this, export, awesome. We're going to export our bottle as well. Individual components. And then what we can also do is export our entire, uh, we don't have to because it's already in here, that's fine. We'll just move this and I'll show you how to move it. Move, plastic bottle assembly. Uh, before I do that, let me rename this as full assembly, not fully. We will move. 
to full assembly move. You'll see it disappear. It's now in full assembly. And when we go into bottle assembly individual components, we can upload, select files. Here they are. You can do more than one upload and they'll go into that bottle assembly individual components as their own components but what's really cool is it keeps the entire timeline because it's an f3d file and it doesn't have any of the other um, components that we are working with like the cap so this is really cool if you want to go render something individually and you don't want to have to worry about hiding everything you want to keep everything organized. If you maybe just want to 3D print one cap, um, something like that, I find this very useful. It's a really nice organizational tip. Um, and in this particular instance, we still have this full assembly that we can then go back and reference. So I think that's about it. Uh, let me know if there's anything else with regards to organization tips. Um, you can access all of these projects once they're saved on your A360 account online because Fusion 360 is a cloud-based software. It automatically uploads them as long as you have enough space. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.